Welcome to Health Watch Alert. I'm Carly Callahan. Chances are you're one of millions of Americans taking a drug to help you lose weight and decrease obesity. But how much do you really know about the safety of your medications? What health risks are the pharmaceutical companies and your doctors failing to tell you about? Thanks to the recent passage of the Registered Information Generated by Health Trials, or the Right Act, WRSP is able to bring you cutting-edge information about the possible dangers of the popular weight loss drug, Protextrol. You've heard about all of the positive benefits of taking Protextrol, but until recently, the makers of the drug, Pharmacon, tried to sweep the results of negative clinical trials under the rug. Fortunately, this exclusive report exposes the other side of the story, what Pharmacon doesn't want you to know. A WRSP investigation in the Clinical Trials Registry database has uncovered evidence that protectural trial participants have experienced bleeding ulcers as a result of taking the drug. If you've experienced similar conditions, or if you're taking protectrol and want more information about the possibility of bleeding ulcers, it's recommended that you talk to your doctor immediately. Hi! Hi! Hi. Hey, dog? Yeah! Hi, good to see you. Good to see you, too. So, How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Well, I'm better now that I'm off of that drug, I'll tell you that much. So you're on Protextrol, is that the drug you're talking about? Yeah, Protextrol, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And I scheduled an appointment today because I quit taking it last Monday. I was watching the news and I heard this report on Health Watch and it said that this drug is causing people to have bleeding ulcers. Now, my friend Cinda had a bleeding ulcer, and I'm telling you what, she nearly died from it. It was awful, the things that she had to go through. They're not and so I said to myself, well, I'm not dealing with that. I'd much rather have a few extra pounds than have to deal with that sort of thing. So I quit taking it, and I thought I should come and tell you, and I called your offices, and they said you were all booked up, but I told them that it was an emergency. I need to get in and talk to you because my drug was not going to work anymore for me. Have you had any stomach pain or any... Well, well since I quit taking it? Right, or at all, actually. Well, no, but they didn't say, they didn't specify in the report how long it took to develop one. So I was thinking I better get off before we have any kind of trouble. Well, I'm wondering if you heard the same report that I heard on the, on the radio this morning on my way in. I heard some snippet about a drug trial for Protexterol that they've... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that maybe was reported earlier and that there may have been some uh, harmful side effects. But right. they, were, they were trying to hide the report that said this because no one knew about it before. And then the reporter dug it up because she looked on something like a... They had to publish the re on a registry. And so right. she found the report and she, you know, told everyone about well, it. Let me tell you what, I hate to make any kind of decisions on on hearsay or rumor. Well, let me let me tell you what. Um, I bet I can squeeze in time for a phone call. Uh, let me see what I can find out from Pharmacon. They're the company that makes Textrol. Thank you for calling Pharmacon's Protextural Information Hotline. Due to faulty reporting, several news outlets have incorrectly linked Protextural to increased instance of bleeding ulcers. These allegations are untrue. In a stage 2 clinical trial, an error of randomization resulted in a high number of participants in the drug group who had a pre-diagnosed condition of heart disease and were on an aspirin regimen. Upon review, we have confirmed that the increased incidence of bleeding ulcers were linked to the aspirin regimen and not to protexterol. Larger subsequent trials have confirmed that there is no causal link between protexterol and ulcers. We would like to thank you for your partnership in the fight to decrease obesity. If you would like to speak to one of our pharmaceutical representatives, please press 1 now. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Hi there. So, Hi. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting there, but uh, oh, no, it's pretty quick, actually. So, I was able to talk to a colleague who has all sorts of these phone numbers handy. I called uh, Pharmacon and heard a recorded message that they have We well, have never talked to a real person. I know. I know how it is. Uh, so, got this recorded message, and 
the gist of it is that there was an early stage trial, stage two trial, which means one of the early stages of the development of the drug, uh, where they had a small sample group, and statistically the randomization was skewed such that um, a great percentage of people in the drug uh, part of the study, not the control group that weren't getting the drug, but in the, in the part of the study getting the drug, happened to have heart disease as well. As you know, sometimes heart disease and obesity, you know, coexist, but um, a disproportionately high number of people in the control, I'm sorry, in the drug group had uh, heart disease, and it was because of the regimen for their heart problems that they were experiencing these bloody ulcers. There's no connection between textural and these bleeding ulcers. And that's why this report hasn't been circulated widely at this point. But I saw it on the Health Watch right. last week. They said, you know, talk to your doctor. They said the drug for textural, they were testing it, and the, the subjects who were taking it yes. ended up, they didn't have bleeding ulcers before, and they ended up with bleeding ulcers. Right. And I don't, I don't want to take that kind of risk, because I can, you know, there are other drugs, I'm sure, that we can work out. Well, what, something, because I don't want it. A typical course, of treatment for many heart uh, disease patients is a regimen of aspirin, and aspirin can lead to these bleeding ulcers. And so, uh, what looks very clear to me is that these patients who were also on an aspirin regimen for their heart disease were also part of this study, and so it makes it look as if uh, textural is causing these ulcers. But I'm confident that. Um, but I don't know why. Why would they try right? to hide that then? I don't know. It wasn't it's... published until the the report. The, um, the registry, and sure. then she, the reporter, she found it on there and did the story to trying to warn people what they're doing. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm not sure. Exactly trying to keep people event. sick is what they're doing. Huh. I, I hope that's not the case. Uh, really, what I think is going on is that because it's such an early stage trial and there are stages afterwards that, you know, no other test for this drug has yielded the results of that one test. And so what uh, what Pharmacon has concluded, and what I think is also very sound science, in fact, is that it was one bad test based on a randomization error. So, I, I mean, I don't know about all the science involved. I'm not a doctor. But I do know that people took the drug, ended up with bleeding ulcers. I know what that entails. I don't want to mess with that. What are we going to do? We literally have three days to get something to the senator, and we've wasted two of them. I don't know what we can recommend to do. I think that's a good point. I mean, this this right act is giving us a lot of trouble here. I mean, you know, to me, it seems like it's just created more problems than it's attempted to solve. We just have all these big media scandals between, like, what these drugs are happening. We're having all this corporate backlash. We have the pharmaceutical companies are riding us trying to get this bill amended or uh, at least it, or annulled. And, you know, I think that these new circumstances may be an opportunity that we should probably just scratch the bill and start over. Given all of the stress that we've had to go through, that seems like a really good idea to me right now, but at the same time, I think we can't just get rid of the entire project. We can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as, as we might conceive of it, because it does so many good things. It forces all of these big pharmaceutical companies and all of these people who do tons of clinical trials to at least have some place where the consumer and some place for the media to go to, you know, control this. It seems like there are good things that are coming out of this. Like, even though this, you know, this ulcers thing may not have been a big deal, at least we knew about it, right? 